This is a video demonstrating the capabilities of the bus display board for the CPUville single board Z80 computer. This is the CPUville Z80 single board computer. It's a small computer capable of running the CPM operating system. Um, it has a Z80 processor, of course, um, two kilobytes of ROM with uh, a monitor program and 64K of RAM. It has a serial port that can be used to connect this to a terminal display <clears throat> and a um, IDE disk interface for um, using the CPM operating system. Well, this computer is a good quick way to get into a complete computer that will run CPM. However, if you're also interested in the details of how a microcomputer system works, um, there isn't much to see here. The original CPU will Z80 computer had simple input-output ports and a bus display that allowed you to see all the details of how the computer system was working. But uh, this simple computer does have a system connector, and I designed and built a bus display board for this computer also, the bus display for this computer, in addition, has simple input-output ports and a slow clock and a single step clock that make it similar to the original CPUville computer with the bus display attached. Uh, one nice feature of this also is that the serial port will continue to work even with the bus display attached on the slow clock so that... Um, you can have the computer sort of remaining intact and enter commands through the port um, in order to have something to display. The uh, bus display board has clocks on it, and so we can uh, use the clocks that are on it to run the Z80 computer. Here's the bus display board. Uh, we can attach it using the uh, system connector. Uh, we have to remove the reset and clock jumpers because we're going to be using a reset switch and clock jumpers on the bus display board. And it just uh, sits on top of the, the Z80 computer. A nice little stack. And power it up. I'm just selecting a fast clock here. The board has the following features. There is a display of the system address bus. This uh, is the address that's being expressed by the Z80 processor to the system. There are the control lines from the Z80. Now this isn't all, this is a subset of them. Uh, M1 shows when the Z80 is entering into the beginning of its machine cycle. Uh, the input-output request and memory request show when the Z80 is requesting input from or output to an input-output port or memory. And the read and write signals tell whether the Z80 is requesting to read or write to a port or memory. Uh, Here is display the data bus. Uh, these are the, um, this is the 8-bit data that's going from the Z80 to memory or ports, or the other way, from memory or ports to the Z80. Uh, reset shows whether the processor is running or is in the reset condition. Here, with reset high, it's running. And the clock is also shows the, the pulses that the Z80 is using to operate. Um, this board has three different clocks. It has a fast clock oscillator, 1.8432 megahertz. That's the one that's selected now. And using this switch, you can select between the fast clock or a slow clock, which runs at about eight cycles per second, which is shown here. Um, and finally, there's a single step clock. The single step clock is controlled by the two switches, two push buttons here. This one places the clock 
signal up, this one down. So if you watch the clock signal, you can see it going up and down like this with each click of these buttons. This allows you to put the Z80 through its processes one click at a time so you can see in detail everything that's going on. In addition to the displays and the clocks, there are two input and two output ports of simple type. These simple input ports are these DIP switches and the output ports are these LEDs. Now I'll show what you can do with the bus display board. Uh, right now the computer's turned on and it's running the fast clock. I've started a terminal program and if I reset the computer you can see the greeting message appear in the terminal display with the monitor prompt. As it works the same as it does without the bus display attached. Now what I'll do is enter a short program and use this to demonstrate what you can see by looking at the display LEDs. So I'll use the run, I mean the load command to run a, a small program. I'm loading the program at address 0800 which is the beginning of the uh, RAM and the, with the computer memory in this configuration. These are the machine code bytes of a short program. DB04 is machine code for load the accumulator with input from port 4. D304 is display what's in the accumulator on output port 04. And C30008 is jump to location 0800, which is the beginning of the program, so it'll loop around. Basically, it just takes whatever input is on the port 4 switches and puts it on the port 4 LEDs to display. So we'll run the program using the run command. And if you look at the computer now, when I change the switches on port 4, uh, the LEDs light or go off correspondingly. and so forth. So you might notice that the data on port 4 appears on the upper part of the address bus. This is an undocumented feature of the Z80. Not sure if it's a feature or what, but it was put in by the designers. It doesn't have any particular use. It won't interfere with the function of the input-output instructions since those instructions only use the lower eight bits of the address bus to define their port address but it's something you might notice. Not every manufacturer Z80 will do this, but the Z80 is from Zilog, and this one is a Z80 from Toshiba, will do it. So now what we can do is we can switch to the slow clock. Uh, we turn off the fast clock, turn on the slow clock, which runs at about eight cycles per second, and it's running the same program but uh, now you can begin to see what's going on on the system buses. Uh, the address display displays um, the addresses of the input-output ports that it's using as well as the memory locations to get the program from. There is other data there for memory refresh, uh, which is part of the Z80's machine cycle, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The control signals are active low. That is, when they go out, that means the processor is doing that. So if you watch the read LED, every time it goes out, the processor is requesting a read, either from a port or from memory. Uh, same with the other one. So the memory request lamp goes out uh, when it's requesting memory. The input-output request lamp LED goes out when it's requesting an input-output port, either for read or write. The M1 signal shows when the processor is at the beginning of its machine cycle. The clock is just showing the pulses that the processor is using to perform its actions. 
So if you notice, the memory request and the read LEDs go out together from time to time. That's when it's reading the instructions from the memory into the processor. Similarly, the input-output request and the read lights go out at the same time sometimes. And that is when it is um, reading data from the port switches. The input-output request and the write LEDs go out at the same time when it's writing that data to the LEDs. So now it's going very slow. It won't do this instantaneously like it does on the fast clock. You can change the switches, but then you have to wait a bit for the data to appear on the output port. But it's still doing everything it was doing when uh, it was running on the fast clock, only now you can see what it's doing. So to go even slower, you can turn off the slow clock and turn on the single step clock. Now the single step clock is run by these two switches hooked up to a bounceless toggle, basically a flip-flop that just sets the clock low and high. Now this particular Z80 that I have in the computer by Toshiba is one of the ones that does this very well. Uh, there's also a Z-Log um, Z80 part that also does this very well. Most Z80s will single step, but you can't leave the clock on low. If you leave it on low, some Z80s will get unstable and you'll see the lights start to come on and then the Z80 will lock up. However, the, the Toshiba Z80 that I'm using here uh, is stable whether the clock is low or high. There are informations and part numbers in the instruction manual for the bus display, so if you want to get a Z80 that uh, works really well in single stepping, you can see those part numbers. So now if we, we'll just go through the instruction and wait till the M1 light comes off. There. So this is M1 and this is the beginning of a machine cycle. And uh, right here, the address displays 0800. So it's the machine cycle that is going to execute the first instruction in the program, which is, we saw before, DB04. So it's going to first fetch the operation code, which is DB, um, and then it's going to go through a refresh cycle. Then it's going to fetch the address, 04, and then it's going to perform the instruction and bring whatever data is on port 04 into the accumulator. We'll see all those steps as we go through this. So the first thing that happens is it's going to fetch the instruction. So as we cycle through, the memory request and read lights will come off, meaning it's reading from memory, and you'll see the first byte of the instruction, DB, appear on the data bus. There, DB. Um, so this is now read into the processor's accumulator, the A register. I mean, it's read into the instruction register, rather. And now the interpret now the processor will interpret the instruction and perform it. The next uh, couple of clicks is the refresh cycle. Now the refresh cycle um, is performed while the Z80 is interpreting the instruction it got, so there's really no waste of time or energy. Um, the refresh cycle is for systems that have dynamic memory that need to be boosted uh, every millisecond or so. Um, these are memories that are made essentially with small capacitors that will leak if they're not refreshed. And the refresh cycle is characterized by the memory request lamp going out all by itself. The write and the read LEDs are both on, showing they're inactive. In addition to the memory request going low, there is a refresh signal also put out by the Z80, not shown here, that is used to refresh these dynamic memories. And the third part is there is a row address placed on the address bus during the refresh cycle to tell which row of memory to refresh. So let's go to the next cycle. Okay, now what's going to happen is the, the instructions 
in the Z80 instruction register. It's being interpreted, and now the Z80 is going to fetch the next byte of the instruction, which is the port address. Port address is located at 0801. So it's put the address here, now a down click, and you see the memory request and the read lamps are off, meaning it's requesting the memory to put the byte at 0801 onto the address bus, and it's there, 04. And now with uh, another click, it reads this byte into its instruction register, and now it has the whole instruction. So as we go through, the next thing it's going to do is perform the instruction, which is an input-output read. So now the input-output request light is off, and the read light is off, meaning it's taking whatever is on this these switches, on t putting it on the data bus and into the accumulator or the A register of the Z80. So here it is, and it's being taken into the Z80. So after that takes place, we're going back to M1 for the next instruction. Remember, the next instruction is to place whatever's in the accumulator onto the output port. So first it's going to get the instruction, which is D3. Then it's going to go through its refresh, as you can see. Now it's going to get the second byte of the instruction, which is the port address, 04. Now it's going to interpret that and place the data from the accumulator onto the output, onto the data bus and to the output port. So there it is. That's the byte that we've seen before and being placed on there. And you have the input-output request and write lamps being low, meaning the processor is signaling this port to write the data of the data bus onto, its, onto the LEDs. And then after that's finished, we go back to M1, which is the next instruction. Now this is going to be a jump instruction. So it's C3, that's the jump instruction. And then we do the memory refresh. And the address comes next, which is 00, 08. And now it's going to do the jump. Here's the, it's done the jump, actually. Put that address into its uh, program counter, and you can see it there. 0800, M1 is low, so it's going back to the beginning of the uh, program loop. And it'll perform all these steps again. Now this concludes the demonstration of the um, bus display for the CPUville Z80 single board computer. Um, if you want to know more about it, check the CPUville website and the instruction manual there has details and schematics that you can look at. This is Don Stewart. Thanks for watching.